Hey guys, how you doing? So today is the uh, 22nd of July uh, 2022 and once again here I'm in downtown Sydney uh, doing another viral video uh, for you guys. Now um, I wanted to come on my channel today because I actually wanted to share the gospel with you. Um, I haven't uh, shared the gospel with you guys for quite a long time now <laughs> and uh, to be quite honest I think I actually forgotten to share the gospel with you. Uh, and that's because I've been very busy, at least for the last six months that I can think of. I uh, haven't looked at my uh, YouTube videos that I've been posting, in that I've been trying to, you know, decipher and help you with end time Bible prophecies. And so my work has just been all about end time Bible prophecies, uh, you know, with regards to all my videos pretty much for the last six months. So I do apologize for that. So, first up, let me share the gospel of salvation with, um, with you in which you are saved and um, this is actually uh, something that is very important that you do right now because like I've been saying in my previous videos first of all probably I should say that I do apologize that I deleted my last two videos on my channel now you guys are probably wondering uh, what is going on there with me <laughs> to be honest I'm a little bit scared you know uh, to keep those videos up because I, I talk a lot about politics in there, you know, and uh, although I don't have any YouTube strikes uh, yet, I did get a couple of emails video, I mean, I did get a couple of emails before from YouTube uh, regarding some of my videos, you know, that they wanted me to delete those videos. And sometimes I feel like I can't really move forward even with my, with my own channel unless I actually delete those videos. So, um, but anyway, uh, I don't want to talk too much about that, I guess, but uh, I guess I was thinking actually maybe re-putting back the last video that I did because I actually got um, the prophecy in Daniel 9.27 and what actually that entails and what actually that means. So I'm not sure whether to put that video back or maybe just make a short video on that. So uh, we'll see. Um, now, um, let, let, let's just, uh, let me just go through the, the gospel now. The gospel you will find it in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Uh, how Jesus died on the cross, and that he was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Now, much short that you believe this by faith, you're only saved by faith, or in other words, by believing in the gospel of salvation. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. So Ephesians uh, 2 and 9 says that our salvation relies uh, heavily on, or basically just relying on what Jesus uh, did at the cross, that in other words, that he made the blood atonement for us since that, you know, Jesus uh, willingly took his own life at the cross and he shed his blood to make the blood atonement for our sins, um, past, present and future. So we have to believe what Jesus did at the cross. Salvation doesn't come by what we do. You know, for example, like I got a brother that does a lot of charity work and uh, he actually delivers meals uh, to poor people. And, uh, you know, we are not saved by what we do. We are saved by strictly believing what Jesus uh, did at the cross. You know, uh, John 3.16 says that, you know, uh, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in Jesus, believes in him, shall not perish but have eternal life. You know, uh, John 14.6 says that, um, you know, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God the Father except by believing in what I did, you know, or through me, you know, or by, by you believing in the gospel of salvation. So uh, we, are, we are only saved by Christ through faith in Christ alone, not of works, lest any man should boast, like I said before, you know, Ephesians 2 at 9. So, yeah, I wanted to share the gospel uh, for the first time in actually quite a long time. So I do apologize. I'm not sure that you get saved now and believe in Jesus today because we are running out of time. Like I said on my previous video uh, that I posted a, a couple of days ago, I did say that, um, you know, Iran has declared war on Israel practically or just about. Although the media is not saying out that, hey, you know, Israel is going uh, to war up against Iran. Uh, we know that that's what's going to happen because the Bible tells us, you know. Um, the fact that Iran has already declared in the last few days that they are now, that they can now enrich uranium, um, to weapons grind, that, that, that means that they can actually put a warhead on any nuclear missile. And, uh, and just by sending one nuclear missile to um, to Israel, they can practically wipe out all of Israel. So, 
you know, this is a huge threat to Israel. And the fact that Iran has come out and said this is nothing short of a declaration of war because Iran knows very well that saying something like this publicly, that this is a provocation uh, or, or in actual fact a declaration of war to Israel, they know that Israel will, um, you know, uh, react to this. So, um, you know, and, and not only this is a provocation of war, but it's also actually mocking or making fun of Israel, you know. And the Iranians think that they, they can get away with this because, you know, uh, they've got agreements with China um, and Russia, that's two uh, superpowers, you know. Uh, they are also working closely with Syria and with the terrorists uh, Hamas and Hezbollah in Lebanon. So, uh, you know, we know that Iran is supplying um, weapons uh, into Syria and also into Lebanon. Uh, and we've seen how the, how the Israeli army has to uh, bombard recently um, the Damascus airport because they have found out through intel that, uh, you know, the Iranians were bringing in uh, weapons uh, into Syria by using just commercial uh, aeroplanes. So, and then in turn, that they will send them over to Lebanon, to Hezbollah. So, you know, this is all brewing. Um, we know all about the Ezekiel war, like I said on my previous video. It will come to pass, but uh, no doubt that, um, you know, before the Sikhi war in 38, 39, like I said before, we're going to have uh, the Ila and Baba process being fulfilled very shortly because Israel has to react to this threat from Iran. So the Ila and Baba prophecy you will find there in Jeremiah um, chapter 49, verses 34 to 39, that says that, uh, you know, uh, Elam, which is uh, an area in the southwest of um, Iran, it's going to be completely wiped out, just like uh, Damascus is uh, uh, when Isaiah talked about Damascus in, uh, in Isaiah 17.1 being a heap of ruins. So this two Bible prophecies, not that, will be fulfilled very shortly. Uh, you know, Israel has to put a lead on this threat. So they're going to be, looks like they're going to be fulfilling Jeremiah 49 Elam. So in that Elam area, there's a Bashir nuclear power reactor plant. So uh, it's been prophesied that uh, Israel is going to wipe it out. So uh, that's going to happen very soon, perhaps in the next couple of weeks. Israel is preparing for this, so uh, we'll see how this pans out. But uh, no doubt that they're also going to be going for Isaiah 17.1, the fulfillment of that prophecy that says that Damascus is going to be a heap of ruins. And Israel, from a military point of view, has to fulfill these two prophecies of Isaiah 17 and Jeremiah 49 before uh, they go into the uh, Ezekiel war because you know, also uh, Russia, uh, Turkey, and Iran, and Syria, then in a provocation from, from Israel. And so, uh, you know, as soon as Israel fulfills its two Bible prophecies, uh, then, you know, it's all at war with the secret 38, 39. So, but Israel has nothing to worry because God is going to protect them. Uh, God is going to uh, wipe out that great northern army. I think it was like something like eight, one six, or roughly about 85%. And uh, God is going to be running uh, down from heaven, fire and brimstone. He's going to also wipe them out with pestilence, with a flood. So, um, you know, uh, Israel is going to win this war. Uh, we know that Israel, uh, since they become a nation in 1948, they can go from strength to strength to strength to glory very soon uh, during the uh, Chaikos trouble or the tribulation period in which God is going to send the two witnesses and he's going to... Uh, Glorify Israel by, you know, um, you know, uh, t telling the Israeli uh, people by using the two witnesses that hey, you know, uh, Jesus is your real Messiah, and then ult ultimate glorification will happen when uh, Jesus comes to rule as the King of Israel uh, during the Millennial Kingdom. So um, Israel has gone since 1948 from strength to strength to glory soon, and then ultimate glorification when we come with Jesus to reign for the uh, Millennial Kingdom. So it's essential that you get signed now because after the secret war, we're going to have a rapture of the church because uh, w when we see the end of the secret war, which I don't think is going to last very long, if anything, you know, think what God did in Exodus uh, to Pharaoh. You know, within that, perhaps a week or two, God, y you know, can wipe, wipe this great Northern Army out very quickly because the rapture of the church is pressing, you know, and uh, and so I think that uh, God is going to do this, um, you know, act of God, if you like, real quick. So, uh, 
you know, God's supernatural power is very quick and swift, so it's not going to take very long. So I don't think that this Ezekiel 38, 39 people is going to be a long, dragging war, just like this war between Russia and the Ukraine. No, when God intervenes, it's going to be quick and swift. And like I said, uh, the birth pains are pressing, you know, the, the, the rapture is pressing, uh, it's knocking on the door, and so God has to work real quick on this. So, um, you know, and uh, Israel is going to be fulfilling these two prophecies, Elam and Isaiah, very shortly. Uh, you know, Iran now has, uh, has made a war declaration. Israel has to protect its, itself and its nation, and it's, gonna, and it's planning right now uh, to act on this. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to, to say this. Uh, now, um, I'm not sure whether to load up that video again about the uh, prophecy of Daniel 9.27 in which I deleted that video. Now, perhaps I should just quickly say now, now, now Daniel 9.27 um, is, is actually all for Israel. A lot of Bible scholars are having trouble uh, with the prophecy in Daniel 9.27. Basically, let me debunk the first 11 words according to the King James Bible. The King James Bible is the only Bible I read and I use, and it has allowed me to decipher a lot of end-time Bible prophecies. And without the King James Bible, I couldn't have deciphered for you. Uh, all those videos that I did, you know, about the, the rapture of the church, you know, in, uh, you know, I was giving you all the, in the, in the impending Bible prophecies before the rapture and deciphering for you the two witnesses and, you know, the role of the 144,000 and, uh, you know, and, and now I'm going to decipher for you Daniel 9.27 now. Daniel 9.27 is only for, for Israel. Uh, when it says, and he shall confirm, uh, the covenant with many. Confirming the covenant means that there has to be a previous pact or agreement prior. And so what's going to happen is that when um, Israel defeats his great northern army, in other words, Ezekiel 38, 39, soon after the Antichrist is going to uh, come out and say, hey, Israel, congratulations. Uh, God has been on your side. He's helped you to defeat this great northern army. Guess what? I'm your Messiah. And uh, hallelujah, you know. And Israel is going to say, oh, yeah, you know, like, uh, you, you look, you know, you look like the part, you can be our Messiah, you know, we, we, we believe you, especially after what God has done, you know. And uh, I'm just talking here symbolically, you know, uh, just to make this video short. And, um, and then, uh, you know, the, the Messiah is going to say to the nation of Israel, hey, guys, I need to confirm with you, uh, you know, a peace covenant as per Daniel 9.27, and then I'm going, to t I'm, I'm going to announce it to the world. Now, when he says, um, and he shall confirm uh, um, the covenant, confirm it means like I just said now that he's going to say to Israel, hey guys, I've got to tell, I've got to confirm the covenant with you, that I'm your Messiah. You know, the, this, peace, this peace treaty, if you like. And then uh, confirming the covenant with many, the word many is a very key word. Many refers to uh, telling the whole world. That's what it means, telling the whole world. And so, and he shall confirm the covenant with many. In other words, that uh, when when uh, the Antichrist confirms uh, this peace agreement with, um, with Israel, he's going to come out and say to the whole world, Hey, I've got a signature here from Israel. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm their Messiah and I'm here to rule for the next seven years during the trip. This is obviously a symbolic signature. And then rapture of the church. And, and what happens is, uh, at, 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 at the same time as um, the prophecy in Daniel 9.27 uh, happens, it's also triggering uh, post prophecy in Second Thessalonians that the men of sin shows up. Always say we already got the apostasy, and then bang, uh, rapture of the church. So, and also if you look at Isaiah chapter 28, 15, uh, which says, um, and because you can sign uh, a covenant uh, with death, with death and health, we are at agreement. So basically, what the prophets are saying is that, you know, this is just for Israel. You know, confirming uh, the Antichrist uh, pact. Uh, or agreement, or as per Daniel 9, 27, uh, the covenant that, that the Israel has in that they will accept um, their Messiah. We know him as the Antichrist, and then the Antichrist is going to announce it to the world, and then bang, rapture of the church. Now, we need these four Bible prophecies um, before the rapture of the church, and we are not going to get out of here till all these four be fulfilled. Obviously, there's a few others as well. Uh, there's more than these four Bible prophecies, but these are the, more, the four major ones. Uh, that will trigger the rapture of the church. Uh, now, obviously, we got Bible prophecies about the rapture of the church. 
not only in, uh, you know, in Paul, in Thessalonians, but also in Matthew and with Isaiah, Jeremiah and so on. So there's just quite a lot, but th th these four will trigger the rapture of the church. Now, uh, I hope that Bible scholars uh, uh, do understand this because I'm hearing a lot of theories from Bible scholars regarding the covenant as part of Daniel 27, in which they think that this, th uh, this covenant uh, is perhaps uh, tied to the Abraham Accords. You know how Israel has signed in recent years um, Abraham Accords um, with the United Arab Emirates, with Bahrain, recently with, um, with Morocco, and, uh, and what's the other one, and, and Sudan. Although Morocco and Sudan, uh, I don't know about them too, they, they, they look like very fragile uh, uh, Abraham uh, peace deals because we know that uh, Sudan and Libya, probably Morocco, are going to be part of this great northern army in exactly 38, 39. So I think Sudan, you can probably rip it up very soon. And, and, and also probably Morocco. I, I, I just don't trust such two nations at all now. Um, but... Um, you know, uh, uh, like I was saying, Israel has signed um, um, Abraham Accords in recent times with uh, Sudan, Morocco, uh, um, the United Arab Emirates and, and Bahrain, and now uh, they really want a, a deal with Saudi Arabia. They're working really hard at this, so um, I hope that they get it because, uh, you know, it says in the Bible that uh, when this is 38, 39 war happens that Saudi Arabia is the only country that's going to be pr practically uh, standing up for, for Israel and saying he's, Saudi Arabia is going to be protesting against uh, the Russians and, and, the, and the Turks and the Syrians and the Iranians saying, hey, you know, you're going to, to war up against Israel to take the spoils. So it says in the Bible that Saudi Arabia is going to be the only country protesting when this CQ 38, 39 war happens. So uh, we'll see how all this pans out. Um, now, um, so yeah, Bible scholars are coming up with all these different theories, thinking that the Abraham Accords are perhaps some sort of uh, covenant, as for Daniel 9.27, and, and he shall confirm a covenant with many, and they're making an error there. Uh, and, and some of them think that it's actually going to be a, 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 you know, a brand new covenant that Israel is going to sign, uh, um, I mean, that the Antichrist is going to sign uh, not only with Israel, but with other nations as well. So I'm seeing a lot of Bible scholars out there with a lot of different theories about Daniel 9, 27 covenant, and they don't understand, uh, you know, precisely who uh, Daniel 9, 27 covenant is for. It's, it's only for Israel. If you read Isaiah 28, 15, uh, and if you read carefully word for word, you know, like you got to decipher this by millimetric word precision, like word for word, you know. That's why I only recommend that you use the King James Bible only. Only. That's how I've been able to decipher all the Bible prophecies that I've given you in a video not long ago, which I entitled, I'm handing over to use the keys of the rapture of the church. And I was also able to decipher for you um, the true witnesses in Malachi in chapter 3, verse 1. Uh, you know, so um, I guess God has, has been giving me the work of doing all the deciphering for you guys. I know that the Holy Spirit and God is using me because when I've been doing all this deciphering work, it was just amazing when I was thinking about all this. Everything just came to me so quick. I didn't put hardly any, any effort on it. No effort at all. Like, um, uh, you know, I just was able to decipher this extremely quickly. Uh, I opened the Bible and within just minutes, bang, bang, bang now. Uh, how I came to um, deciphering for you uh, the two witnesses in Malachi, that is also, uh, you know, uh, one of those God's interventions because I saw a Bible scholar saying, he was saying um, on YouTube that the two witnesses are going to be um, Enoch and Elijah because they didn't die, they, they were ruptured out, but you know, we are also going to be uh, ruptured out, you know, we are, some of us are not going to die, you know, we're going to um, you know, go straight through the rapture without dying. So, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to say that Enoch and Elijah are actually the two witnesses. Because if you are a Bible scholar, sure enough, you will know that if you read uh, Revelation 11, it clearly alludes to Moses and Elijah. Even though uh, it doesn't clearly say that it's going to be Moses and Elijah, they, it alludes to uh, Moses having the power uh, to turn water into blood and Elijah. 
uh, having the power, uh, you know, uh, to, to to cause either you know either dread or rain, you know. So just like Moses had a power over Pharaoh, you know, uh, during Exodus, you know, um, and also how uh, Elijah had the power over King Ahab, you know. Uh, so. Um, you know, and also, uh, if you read uh, Malachi, like I said before, I think it was chapter 4, verse 5, he says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, you know, so we, we know that Elijah is 100% in the Bible, not, come, uh, not that about it, but Moses uh, had to be deciphered, and uh, I deciphered that in, in Malachi chapter 3, uh, verse 1, he says, Behold, I will send you the messenger of the covenant. When I read that, it only took me seconds to walk there. Yeah, the mention of the car, and that's 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 Moses, you know. If you read Exodus, so um, you know, and uh, I, I do respect this Bible scholar. You know, I really like him. He's got a very high intellect. You know, I really admire him. You know, like uh, obviously all of us have um, different opinions. You know, but because he said um, uh, Enoch and Elijah, I was really upset, and I thought I had to debunk this. I had to see if I if I can find a Bible prophecy. You know. Uh, that, that puts Moses in there, and I went straight to Malachi, obviously, you know, but, uh, you know, I never bothered to, to study this for myself because I thought, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Bible clearly alludes to, to uh, Moses in Elijah, and also there's a type there in, in a, you know, if you read the book of Matthew, like I did this video before, you know, that during street Jesus' uh, transfiguration in Mount Tibor, Moses and Elijah, uh, you know, appear unto Jesus, so, um, you know, everything points to, to, uh, uh, to, you know, the evidence clearly points more to Moses and Elijah than Enoch and, um, than Enoch and Elijah. And let's not forget that Enoch, right? Enoch is not part of the Abrahamic um, covenant. Okay, so, um, you know, Enoch was not part of the Abrahamic ab a covenant. He was, he was just raptured because he walked with God. God liked him because he was a, you know, he believed in God, you know, so uh, that, that, that's all it happened, but he's not part of the uh, Abrahamic covenant, so, and um, there's not a lot about Enoch in the Bible anyway, all the evidence points all towards Moses and Elijah, and thank God that God gave me this to this cipher for you guys, because now, not only I was, I, I, look, no, no pride and no arrogance on, on me on my part, uh, I give all the credit to God, because when I was thinking about all this, I know that it was through the power of God that allowed me to decipher this very quickly for you. Like, I decipher all these that God is my witness effortlessly, effortlessly. It took me like minutes to, to work all this out. It took me minutes to decipher um, that video that I did for you, like um, I'm handing over to you the keys to the rapture of the church. It only took me minutes, moments, perhaps like 10 or 15 minutes to decipher the whole video. Uh, minutes. Uh, to decipher Moses in Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Um, minutes only to, to, to decipher the role of the 144,000. Now, let me tell you what happened in, in, when I was doing the video of the role of the 144,000. Now, on that morning when I, when I walked up, I was kind of like having a few dreams, you know, about all this, you know, and uh, when I walked up, all, all, everything that I had in my head was about that I had to do something, a video about the, the role of the 144,000. Now, Obviously, the night before, I watched this Bible scholar talking about Enoch and Elijah as the, as the two that are going to be, uh, you know, the witnesses, you know, but I thought to myself, okay, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up, read the Bible, and see if I can find anything on Moses, being 100% for sure without a dad as the uh, other, other witness. But um, when I woke up in the morning, it was more like uh, God just put it into my head. All I woke up is I was just thinking about the 144 they asked, and that's all. And, 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 and the role of the two witnesses, um, you know, um, were going to come after. I was going to debunk that after, but what I did was, um, I think for memory, I think I went straight into uh, Malacca to suffer the two witnesses because I wanted to get that out of my head. And then I went uh, to do the, uh, to decipher the role of the 144 they asked, because I, w I just woke up with this message in my head, the role of the 144 they asked, and that's all that was in my head on that morning. Like, it wasn't about the two witnesses at all. It was all about the role of the 144. And I thought, gee whiz, that's strange. 
But anyway, um, that's what God gave me, and uh, I give all the credit to God, you know, because uh, he's, he was he was able to, uh, you know, allow me to suffer this so quickly. I had all these, I call them rise of thunder, because as I was thinking about this, I had these thoughts in my head, like, um, they were just coming in like rise, you know, like rise of thunder, like, you know, and uh, I was able to do this quickly and swiftly without hardly any work at all, hardly any work at all, and I know this is the work of God working in me, you know, and uh, well, someone has to be, because it says in, in Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, that uh, knowledge will increase in the end times, and uh, perhaps maybe God is using me, um, you know, in the end times to, um, you know, to give you knowledge about all these Bible prophecies that are needed, about the two witnesses, to talk to you about the role of the 144,000, sent to this effort for you, Daniel 9, 27. I have done four much uh, um, Bible works for you, you know, that God has given me to edify the church, you know. I have given you, um, you know, his, I have deciphered for you all the, rapt, all the Bible prophecies that are needed before the rapture of the church. I have deciphered for you the two witnesses. I have told you about the role of the 144,000. I have told you about, uh, I have deciphered for you um, who the two witnesses are, you know, and uh, it's just amazing, you know, like uh, I'll give all credit to God because it's only God that's working for me f uh, for all this because the fact that I was able to do it in just about in an instant, within minutes, it's just amazing, you know. Uh, so, um, you know, no pride or arrogance, I give all the credit to God, but I'm actually um, very grateful to God that He's also uh, glorifying me too, you know, because I'm the first person in the world to have decipher all the Bible prophecies needed before the rapture of the church by using what uh, Paul has said in his Bible prophecies um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, and also in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 3, and uh, using uh, Daniel's uh, prophecies and also uh, using uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah, you know, and to decipher all this for you, you know, and, and the role of the two witnesses. So, um, you know, God also has glorified me too, you know, by allowing me to be the first person in the world to decipher all the Bible prophecies that are needed before the rapture of the church. Also to decipher for you uh, who the true witnesses are without a shadow of a doubt. You see Malachi chapter 3 verse 1, a first in the world. And um, <laughs> I was just thinking foolishly to, to myself the other day. If I already had deciphered this, how come I don't have a medal from um, Christian Monthly? You know how there's magazines there, you know, certain Christian denominations have, you know, monthly magazines or whatever. I deserve a medal for this, don't you think, guys? <laughs> Obviously not, right? Look, I don't really care. I'm, I'm just sort of like laughing at this, you know, like um, I actually deserve a medal for deciphering all the Bible prophecies that are needed before the rapture of the church and also, uh, you know, the true witnesses, you know? No one has been able to decipher the true witnesses, who they really are. Okay, there was... Uh, Revelation 11 and Matthew, you know, about Jesus, you know, uh, transfiguration in Mount Tabor confirmed all this, you know, but for me to be able to find this one Bible prophecy that clearly says it's, it's Moses without a shadow of a doubt, behold, I send you the messenger of the covenant in Malachi 3.1. Nobody has been able to suffer this in the last 2,500 years or so. Uh, when Malachi was here, you know, Malachi was, was a prophet in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah when the second temple um, uh, you know, began its construction and, um, under the orders of uh, King Cyrus, you know? And uh, I'm the first person in 2,500 years. And, w and where is my medal? <laughs> hey guys, where is my medal from uh, Christian Monthly or whatever? <laughs> you know, uh, but no, don't worry, I don't care about the medals. No pride, no arrogance, but I'm, I'm just kind of like laughing at this, you know? And uh, I know that at the be my judgment seat of Christ, God is going to reward me uh, really well because, you know, uh, he, he gave me this. this. This is huge news, but, uh, you know, I don't think you, you guys realize uh, what I'm telling you here. You know, like, uh, I have to suffer for you. The true witnesses are well first, you know, like, uh, and how important that is, you know, and uh, and also they suffer for you all the Bible prophecies that are needed before the rapture of the church. and. And I, and I decipher for you Daniel 9.27, which a lot of Bible scholars are having huge trouble deciphering that because they're coming up with so many uh, theories about covenants, 
they bring in the Abra at the time in the Abraham Accords uh, to, to Daniel 927 and, and also uh, perhaps even a brand new covenant all together with the Antichrist Israel and you know, all these new different nations so you know um, no, no, I just want to make clear no pride no arrogance at all but uh, the fact that God has given me this in the same times to edify the church it's just unbelievable you know I'm amazed I'm like, I just want to chant for joy. I want to go, woohoo! <laughs> you know, like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm so happy, you know, that uh, God has glorified uh, me, you know, because, you know, who, who has come out with, with something like this? You know, like, um, do you know anybody who has come out recently uh, in these same times with this amazing work that I've given you through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God that gave me all this? Do you know anyone who's been able to decipher uh, the two witnesses in the last 2,500 years, aside from Malachi, <laughs> no, only me. And, uh, you know, I've been able to suffer for you, you know, the, the Bible prophecies that I needed before the rapture of the church and, and you now Daniel 9.27 and the precise role of the 144,000, whether you agree with me or not, but God gave me that because I woke up that morning and, and, and I was kind of like in a, in a confused, dreamy state all I had on my head was the 144,000 and I had to that morning just go straight into the Bible and, and I thought, no, God, first I'm going to decipher. Uh, I argue with God just like Abraham did. <laughs> um, I said, no, first of all, I want to deep bank to see if there's anything in Malachi about the two witnesses and then I'm going to go to the 144,000. I had no plans to do the 144,000, no plans at all. I woke up the morning with my role. Uh, the night before thinking that I was going to do the two witnesses, but there you go, you know, like, uh, I give all the credit to God, not, not, no pride at all, it, it's, it's meaningless to me, you know, because, you know, this is all God given to me, but it, it's just unbelievable, you know, like, um, you know, this, this, is, this is huge news, but the church that, that just doesn't realize it now, you know, like, uh, um, because, you know, a lot of Bible scholars have different theories, you know, a lot of us class think that the rapture of the church can happen at any moment. And that's not the case because the Bible teaches that it's a book of uh, prophecies, past, present, and future. And, you know, uh, we, we've got to respect the prophecies in the Bible. It's, you know, a, a third of the Bible is all about prophecies and most of them are for the end times. So, uh, you know, like I said to you in the last video, if you said that the rapture of the church can happen at any moment, then... Uh, whether we defeat this Ezekiel war that, that's coming very shortly with this provocation from Iran. Now, if you were to say that the rapture of the church happens tomorrow, what you're saying is that um, the Ezekiel war is going to be during the trip because it's not going to be any gaps like some Bible scholars are saying during the trip. No, the Bible clearly teaches that the tribulation period is precisely for seven years and that's because uh, Revelation 11 says that as soon as the tribulation uh, begins that dispensation, the two witnesses are going to come out right away, right away, uh, to um, always see the rebuilding of the third temple. And so, and then the four horses of Revelation are going to come out and, and all of God's wrath. And how can God glorify himself if we put Ezekiel 38, 39 during the trip when, you know, the, the Antichrist is going to be ruling? God cannot glorify himself by defeat, defeating this Christ, nor the Narren, while we got Israel in war. Okay, how can Israel be in war with Ezekiel 38 and 9? Well, we've got the two witnesses, you know, you know in Jerusalem, uh, you know, overseeing the rebuilding of the third temple, and, and it's going to get longer and longer and longer than the seven years. It just doesn't make sense at all from any angle that you look at it. And there's not going to be any, any gap either, like some Bible scholars are saying. No, no. It's precisely uh, seven years because as soon as the rapture happens, the two witnesses are going to come out, like it says in Revelation 11. And the four horses of Revelation are going to come, going to be coming out. So there's not going to be any gap like Bible scholars are saying. And then Ezekiel 38, 39 by no means belongs into the millennial kingdom because the Ezekiel war now is just so imminent. Look, look, look at this provocation from Iran. If you were to put, uh, you know, you know if, if you were to put the Ezekiel war in the millennial kingdom, it doesn't work either because uh, for one, uh, as soon as we come back with Jesus, we're going to have Armageddon. Um, then Jesus is going to have the judgment of the sheep and the goats. And how can you say to Jesus, like I did on my previous video, Hey Jesus, why don't you bring the Ezekiel 38, 39 war and get it around done with? 
Jesus is going to, uh, suppose that someone sent me to say this to Jesus, Jesus is going to look at me and say, hey, you, you sheep, I just had the judgments of the sheep and the goats, uh, you know, and you're asking me to have this Ezekiel 38, 39 war. I already judged the nations that have come up against Israel and I can't do this anymore. The only, the only last Gog and Magog war is going to be at the end of the Millennial Kingdom. Uh, in which, uh, you know, the devil is going to be let loose for a little while, for a season, perhaps a year. He's going to deceive people from all, all the nations and they're going to come, come up against us in the Camp of the Saints in Jerusalem. And God is going to bring fire from heaven and wipe them all out. Then we're going to have God's uh, great white throne of judgment, you know, and then, you know, um, the new heavens and the new earth. So this Ezekiel war has to happen right now before the rapture of the church because if it doesn't happen before the rapture of the church then we can't fit it into the um, into the um, into the trip of the millennial kingdom and no, there's not going to be any gap either for this Ezekiel war, no gap during the trip because uh, as soon as the trip happens in that dispensation uh, we're going to have the two witnesses come out so it's not going to make any, any uh, you know, any sense at all so um, Anyway, sorry for keeping this video long, it's 40 minutes, uh, perhaps it's, it's worth its length uh, because I just did punk for you quite a lot of things. Um, uh, I'm, giving you, I'm giving you the gospel early on on top of my video. Uh, I just did bank Daniel Lantern 7 so that uh, I don't have to reload the other video that I did the other day. Um, just remember that Daniel Lantern 7 is only for Israel, uh, you know, and he shall confirm a covenant with many. Confirm the covenant means confirming the covenant with Israel uh, after the, the secret war. Like I said, the Antichrist is going to show up in Israel saying, Hey Israel, I'm, I'm your Messiah. I'm confirming with you guys that hey, you believe that I'm your Messiah, don't you Israel? Israel's going to say, yeah, sure enough, Messiah. You look the part, you're our, our Messiah. Go and confirm the, 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 the covenant and tell the world. And when it's, and, and how he said, and he shall confirm the covenant with many. Once uh, Israel says to the Antichrist, hey, yeah, you're our Messiah, then the Antichrist is going to show up and say, and, and, and uh, execute um, Daniel 9.27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many, uh, send to the world, hey, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Israel's Messiah, I'm here to rule for the trip, and this triggers uh, at the same time that prophecy in Paul, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, that the men of sin shows up, uh, with a confirmation as for Daniel 9, 27 saying, uh, you know, got the signature of Israel here symbolically, then rapture of the church. So I have this cipher, this um, very well and clear to you guys. So um, I just hope that you guys believe me <laughs> because this is the work of God, you know, like uh, God has given me these things, you know, like uh, I know that God is using me. Like, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this because um, why will God give me something like this? And then I've been thinking that all my life, everything that has happened was actually for, for now. You know, I think that um, when I look back in my life, actually God has prepared me. Uh, you know, even since I was young, for 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 what I'm telling you today, to actually come out and say all these things to you. You know, to pretty much, uh, you know, I'm not a prophet, but pretty much prophesy. You know, uh, debunking all these end time Bible prophecies uh, that that I'm giving you. You know, like. I was thinking about this year that I, you know, and I thought, yeah, my life was for this purpose, for this, for this time right now. So uh, there you go, guys, um, you know, and, uh, you know, aren't you guys happy and uh, are at peace that now you know what Bible prophecies are needed before the rapture of the church? Aren't you guys happy that you know now for sure 100% who the two witnesses are, Moses and Elijah, you know? Uh, Aren't you guys happy that I have deep bank for you and Daniel 9.27, you know? And aren't you guys happy that I have told you about what I think is the role of the 144,000, you know, which a lot of Bible scholars add works to, to those 144,000. All they are is virgins, 144,000 virgins are ruptured out, 12,000 each from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And their role is to be where, wherever Jesus goes, they need to be there. And so uh, when we had the tribulation period, like I clearly said on that video, in the role of 144,000. Now, if Jesus is in heaven, okay, uh, opening up the seals, 
um, you know, and keeping uh, the earth graft during the trip, ask yourself this question. It clearly says in the Bible that the role of the 144,000 is to follow, to follow Jesus wherever he is. Now, if Jesus is in heaven, open up the, the seals, and it says quite clearly that the role of the 144,000 is to follow Jesus, then what do you think, in logical terms, where the 144,000 are going to be? They are going to be in heaven because they need to follow Jesus, because they need to be with Jesus, okay? So, in my opinion, I disagree with Bible scholars saying that the 144,000 are going to be out there in Israel, uh, you know, preaching the gospel. No, the role of that gospel is only for that uh, angel, okay? That's the role of the angel to preach the gospel worldwide. And the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, are also going to be preaching the uh, same thing uh, to the Israeli people in Israel, you know, as well as oversee the construction uh, of the third temple. So, um, you know, uh, that, that, that's my view on it. I know that some of our scholars will disagree with me, but that's my opinion. I believe precisely, uh, you know, when, when you decipher a Bible prophecy, um, you really have to stay on it 100% without deviating, not one millimeter either way. Uh, you have to stay on it precisely, uh, analyzing uh, what it says and what it means and not adding any more words. It's no more or no less, it's precisely what it says. And so the role of the 144,000 precisely says that they need to be with Jesus wherever Jesus is. Where will Jesus be, be during the tribulation? In heaven, opening up the seals for the for God's wrath, and it says that the 144,000 need to follow Jesus wherever He is. So, if Jesus is in heaven, opening up the seals during the trip, quite obviously, most logical that the 144, uh, the, 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 yeah, the 144,000 uh, has to be with Jesus because they, they need to follow Him wherever He is. So, no more and no less, like I said in that video. But yeah, some Bible scholars are uh, saying that, you know, uh, they're going to be preaching, you know, the, the, the everlasting gospel like the, like the angel is during the trip. No. I st when it comes to Bible prophecy, I stick to precisely what it means and what it says. And what it says, no more and no less. Uh, because it's Bible prophecy. You, you, ca you cannot play around with Bible prophecy. You've got to stay in. you got to stay in it precise, precisely. You can't even deviate not one millimeter left or right. You've got to be precise on it because it's a Bible prophecy. It's going to be executed precisely as, as, as uh, how it says it's going to be. So um, that's why I debunked that for you. So uh, just to recap here, believe in the gospel of salvation, which you will find in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Believe in Jesus, uh, uh, that he um, died at the cross, shed his blood to make the blood atonement for our sins. And that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. We are saved by faith. Only it's not of works, lest any man should boast. I already told you that just now the role of the 144,000. A deep bank for you, Daniel 9 27. A deep bank for you, uh, Moses, as a second witness in Malachi uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send you the messenger of the covenant, in which if you read uh, the book of Exodus, I think it's Exodus chapter 24, verse 7. The messenger of the covenant and the author of the covenant is none other than Moses. And uh, I already, uh, what else did I, I already debunk for you? All the prophecies that I needed before the rapture of the church. So I have given you a complete works. I have given you a complete works with all end time power prophecies before the rapture of the church. I've given you an encyclopedia with all the works, okay? I've given you everything. And uh, Although I'm not going to get a gold medal from uh, Christian Weekly or Christian Monthly, <laughs> that's okay. I will get my uh, gold bars at the Pima Judgment Seat of Christ. And um, I say this with no pride or arrogance because, you know, this was all given to me by God, you know. But, uh, you know, the fact that God has given me this, I'm going, wow, you know, like jumping for joy, hallelujah, you know, like the fact that. Even if I didn't give you none of the works, let's just say that I only gave you Moses and Elijah, just debunk that. Who has done that in the last 2,500 2, years since Micah was around? No, no one has. I'm, I'm the first one ever aside from Micah. Can you, can you guys think that for a moment? Can you let that sink in for a moment? Man, you know, if you don't think God is going to reward me, you know, very, very generously at the Bema Judgment Seat of Christ, 
unbelievable you know like uh, a bit trembling of course <laughs> you know because i've been in front of jesus you know like uh but Wow, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to it because if God has given me this glory, you know, uh, you know, I'm expecting something out there. Be my chest and seat of Christ, don't you think? <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right, guys, it's a 45 minute video. It's kind of like long, but it, it's a wrap up of everything. Now, I don't really know what else to do. Like, um, I already team punk just about everything for you in end times. If, if there is a Bible prophecy or, or something, because I've been watching a lot of videos from uh, Bible scholars on YouTube, and I have tried to debunk all the problems that they've been having with Bible prophecies, especially in, the, in, this, in these end times and things like that. And to be honest, I don't know what else to debunk. Um, so we'll see what God gives me moving forward from now onwards. Uh, but like I said, you know, um, we're going to see the prophecy of Elam, Elam, in Jeremiah 49 and Isaiah 17.1 be fulfilled very shortly, you know, and then we're going to have this uh, secret war, you know, like, um, you know, with all these talks that um, that that uh, uh, President Putin and um, and the Ayatollah and, and President Raisi uh, together with the President of Turkey, Erdogan, are having, you know, in these days, you know, and then it, yesterday, today and tomorrow, I think, I think it's a three-day visit, these trilateral talks, if you like, not the other talking about, you know, a secret 38, 39, because Iran has already declared war against Israel. by making this public announcement. It's nothing short of a declaration of war. And also, they are mocking Israel because they know that Israel is going to, you know, come a firing out of this. So, it's a provocation, you know. That's, that, 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 that's, that's all it is. So, um, you know, uh, make sure that you guys are safe. Believe in the gospel of Jesus. Uh, warn your family members. Um, you know, if you have believed in Jesus and you have been dormant for many years, you know, what you haven't prayed or whatever, start praying with Jesus now, start making a relationship with Jesus now because the rapture of the church is going to happen very, very soon. We don't have a lot of time left. And I think that, you know, the rapture of the church, when it happens, that will, at any time, doesn't necessarily have to happen during the Feast of Trumpets because I'm not sure if all these, Bible, all these four Bible prophecies that I talked about are going to be fulfilled by John Terue, which is in September uh, 25 to 27, I think, uh, this year. So if uh, we get to Yom Terue and, and the secret war is not, not out of the way, then uh, it's not going to happen, obviously, during Terue, in my opinion. But whenever the rapture happens, it confirms uh, Jesus uh, fulfilling the Feast of Trumpets. And in my opinion, um, I've been saying this for a while, that... Um, the tribulation period or Chekhov's travel um, is Jesus uh, fulfilling the atonement because he's going to send the two witnesses to atone. You know, hey, you know, Israel, come on, you know, we are the two all time much prophets. You need to believe in the real Messiah, Jesus, you know. So I think that will be the atonement or the atonement period. And when Jesus comes for the millennial kingdom, uh, that will be Jesus fulfilling, uh, you know, the feast of uh, Tabernacles or Sukkot, you know. So we know that. Jesus fulfilled the first four. He's got uh, three more to go. He's got uh, Yom Teruah, uh, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. So I think these three will be fulfilled, uh, you know, as, as we go along, you know, with the rapture of the church, the tree, and then the millennial kingdom. So, um, yeah. Now, I think I will leave this video. I don't think I will delete it now because uh, it's, it's almost 50 minutes and, and it kind of like... I'm talking here about quite a lot about many things and uh, I think I'll leave it, you know. Uh, I have deleted some of my videos before, mainly because I'm a little scared about the politics that I talk about on my videos because, like I said, uh, I'm worried about getting strikes. I already had a couple of emails from YouTube not liking some of my videos and I had to, that I had to delete before. So I'm a little bit concerned. Sometimes I leave them for a day, sometimes not even a day. And then I delete them because I'm scared, you know. But... Uh, you know, I think I'll leave this video to edify the church and, uh, you know, uh, so you're more than welcome to share this video uh, out there. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like uh, this video because if you do give it a like, you know, at least uh, you can edify the church in a big way out there, you know, like um, the uh, algorithms in YouTube will uh, promote this video out there to the church and people can watch this video and get edified. So. 
I would really appreciate it if you give it a like, um, you know, and if you wish to subscribe, I'll appreciate that too to help grow my channel to edify the church. So, um, you know, I thank uh, you guys in anticipation in doing that. So thanks for watching, guys. And, um, you know, obviously I plan to do more videos. There's a lot more coming, not there. You know, a lot of things are going to be panning out between now and the rupture of the church in the geopolitical. Uh, not to mention in terms of natural disasters, you know, like... Uh, but America, get ready for judgment because, you know, I, I don't like saying this, you know, it's uncomfortable. But, you know, with what Joe Biden wants to do, you know, in his political party, you know, the Democrats, they want to... Their policy has been from day one to have a choose type solution and so they're, they're looking for division within israel and we know that every time anyone has tried to divide israel that uh god is going to send a judgment you know and america get ready for some kind of natural disaster i'm not sure what that's going to be but and i don't like saying this to you guys you know but i feel very uncomfortable you know but but don't forget that hey you guys are not alone like um, a lot of countries are under judgment as well I mean, look, what, look what's happening in the UK. They got a terrible heat wave. They got wild wow, bushfires in Spain, Portugal, France, and and, and uh, Greece, I believe. In Sydney, we, we just had four floods. We got La Nina effect uh, for two summers. Like the Weather Bureau has come out in the last two days saying that we're going to have a world first in Australia. La Nina running for two summers, which has never happened in, in its whole world, entire history, or whatever since the planet was formed, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, all of us are under judgment because of, you know, what the devil is doing, you know, with, with everything, you know, like uh, the pestilence, the mandates, uh, and God is judging, uh, you know, everybody because we've got principalities all over the world now, so God is judging everyone, not just America. He's not going to judge just America for, you know, just wanting wanting to divide Israel, but he's God is judging you know every, everybody. So you know there's, there's uh, you know um, principalities all over the world now. So uh, look, it, it feels uncomfortable, but you know like uh, you know I will pray for you, uh, but but just remember that God will look after His own. You know so uh, you know if you believe in Jesus, God, God will look after you. So. Um, just bear that in mind. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later on my next Bible videos. <laughs>